Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome back to the show. The Atheist Experience is live January 4th, 2004. I'm your host, Martin Wagner. Russell Glasser, my co-host today, filling in for Ashley Perrion, who is out and about. Uh, we're very happy uh, that you've joined us. We hope uh, that you all had a, a really good time celebrating <laughs> Isaac Newton's birthday a couple weeks ago. And uh, another new year. And all right. Still no rapture. Darn. There's still no second coming. Still no, you know, that darn world keeps forgetting to end. Yeah, I know. I thought this was it for sure because it's such a handy, uh, you know, multiple of four. Mm, I mean, that's, you know, yeah, that's election right. year, Olympics year, good year for the rapture. Uh, I guess so. Well. Oh, well, there's always next year. Yeah, they've got about 360 days to in which to pull it off. So we'll see if they manage to make it. But uh, we are here for now at any rate. Uh, we are the Atheist Experience. The show is sponsored by the Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. The ACA has weekly meetings every Sunday morning at Hot Jumbo Bagels, located at 307 West 5th Street, downtown between Guadalupe and La Vaca, except for the third Sunday of every month when we have our lecture series at the Austin History Center at 9th and Guadalupe. I'm going to repeat that because this is a change. Uh, starting with the new year, we are no longer having our lectures on the first Sunday of the month. We're having them on the third Sunday. Um, however, this month for January, we don't actually have a speaker scheduled, uh, although we are meeting at the Austin History Center that day. I think that what's going to happen is a business meeting of some sort to discuss ACA's plans for 2004 and uh, what the organization is going to be doing. And, of course, we would love all members' input to that. So, uh, Tim said we might be watching some old episodes of Cosmos. Well, we can do that too, I guess. Yeah. But <laughs> we don't all just. <laughs> this is going to be the year of goofing off <laughs> at the ACA. So, um, anyway, uh, so that'll be happening uh, third Sunday of January, and then in February our lecturer will be Don Baker, uh, speaking on the subject of morality. Uh, so, uh, other ACA uh, events that we have, just regular get-togethers, of course, is uh, Godless Gamers, still every Monday night at 7 o'clock at This Man's House, and ACA Happy Hour, which takes place every Thursday evening at Antonio's Tex-Mex uh, at the, near the intersection of Highway 183 and I-35. And um, that starts about 7.30-ish, but people tend to trickle in all evening long, so uh, just look for the very loud, uh, boisterous table full of people. Um, having fun, and maybe there's a few of these fish on the table. And you'll know that that's the ACA group. Uh, the Nonprofits is our bi-weekly internet audio show, which plays at the AtheistNetwork.com website, a live MP3 stream every other Saturday at 2 o'clock p.m. The most recent episode was yesterday. Um, Good the, to have you on. Uh, thank you. Yes, their, their guest yesterday was the great me. Yay. And um, it's uh, hosted by Jeff D. and Russell Glasser and uh, just whoever else uh, they happens to be at your house that day hanging out. Yeah. Um, but it's a terrific show, 90 minutes of news analysis and uh, just uh, very discussing various topics of interest to atheists. So um, that is at the atheistnetwork.com website. And, uh, it, it, uh, but, and there is a live interactive chat feature, a sort of a JavaScript uh, chat room that they have going on with the show. But if you cannot, for some reason, go to the atheistnetwork.com website and get the live feed directly through their site, you can visit our website at atheist-community.org. On the radio show page, uh, Russell has thoughtfully provided a direct link to the live feed uh, from our site, too. So uh, there you go. Yesterday's... Um, uh, episode is already up online. Oh, it's on. If okay. If anyone wants to hear it. And Good. There's a lot of fun stuff about the uh, Pledge of Allegiance case. Yeah, yeah. And we were going to have uh, Jeff actually come on and be a guest on the show today, but he had a, 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 a scheduling conflict because he's, compl he's compiled a whole lot of very interesting information on uh, Michael Newdow's ongoing under God in the Pledge right. case uh, that I guess the Supreme Court is hearing, right? They're, yes, they're it gonna is. Hear it. So, uh, so we'll have but, Jeff. Uh, Jeff's taking a rain check. Yeah. He's going to come on in the future. Come on later time, and uh, and that'll be good. So uh, a lot of very interesting info, but you can at least get a teaser of that by listening to yesterday's nonprofits. And, of course, I think there's about a, about a half a dozen of the most recent episodes are on right. the other side. So you can get a taste of that. Okay. Uh, and last but not least, uh, our pals at the University Atheists and Agnostics. I guess they're getting ready to start up the spring semester. Uh, their website is studentorgs.utexas.uaa, and uh, I guess as soon as they get all situated and decide to update that, they will have information on where their meeting times and meeting places will be for the spring semester. Uh, but it's been a pretty successful little group, you know, going through its usual settling in and growing pains phase. Uh, but um, 
if you are a registered UT student or faculty member, uh, check them out. Uh, it's the, the first group of its kind, really, for atheists and agnostics at UT, and we're very proud of them for getting all that together. So, um, that, I guess, uh, takes care of it just for the usual uh, spate of announcements. So, again, thank you for joining us on the program today. Um, we are, uh, if you've never seen the show before, uh, we've been on the air just a little over six years now. Uh, we take live calls from, uh, from folks who want to talk about, uh, might be curious to know what atheism is all about and uh, how atheists think about things. Um, but if you've never seen the show before and you're thinking about maybe calling us in and asking a question, be sure and check out the website at atheist-community.org. It's right there at the bottom of your screen. We have a fact page on the website, Frequently Asked Questions. That's where we have assembled all of the most common questions that atheists tend to get from believers and we've put them all together in a big fact. Uh, actually, Russell did all, did all the work well, on that. Well, uh, you and I both uh, contributed a lot to it. Well, that's true. Yeah, and, and several other members as well. So, uh, and so, who knows? We may have already answered your question, but if not, uh, we're here live. We've been on the air for many, many years, and uh, we're sort of the lone voice in the wilderness of you know half a dozen twenty-four hour a day Christian cable channels, and we're the ninety minutes a week of the alternate viewpoints. So, mm, enjoy, boy, mm, boy indeed. So I believe We're on the verge of taking taking over the world, though, if you listen to uh, Christian popular opinion. <laughs> uh, yes, and we will we will be talking about that here in just a few minutes, won't we? Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, all right. So without further ado, uh, we're going to go ahead and. Uh, do some news. See what's happening uh, with the, the new year. Okay. What is happening in the world, Russell? <sighs> Florida Governor Jeb Bush reminded mm. inmates of the awesome love of our Lord Jesus at the recent dedication of what he called the nation's first faith-based prison. <laughs> oh, man. That, that's where they put you in a little room and say, you won't leave, right? <laughs> Well, is, wasn't there a prison in Michigan where they were doing a thing to where if, if the prisoners participated in Christian services, they would get all these privileges up to and including the keys to their own cell? <laughs> that was happening in Michigan. It was in, it's insane. But mm, I bet nobody took advantage of that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Doing time at the Law T Correctional Institution means prayer meetings, religious studies, and counseling, choir practice, and the like. Correction Secretary James Crosby Jr. said the new prison is a place where prisoners can practice their faith without those unpleasant negative pressures and interactions that naturally take place in some of our institutions. Uh -huh. No word on how non-fundamentalist Christian taxpayers feel about the facility. Well, they, I'm sure they could care less, right? And <laughs> so are they doing a faith-based prison for uh, Islamic prisoners? Uh, not that I've heard of. Uh, how about for Jewish prisoners or, or um, you know, Hindu prisoners? Nope, haven't heard anything about that either. So, I mean, I suppose that would be one of the negative pressures and interactions that they were talking about, oh, is yeah. having to talk to those Jews. Oh, yeah, all those <laughs> other religions, yeah. yeah. So, again, it's the thing, if you participate in Christianity, you get treated better. Right. You know, especially, you know, by a, a fundamentalist administration. Mm -hmm. So, and then they can turn around and say, "See, Christians are happier." <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, Ashley recently had a report uh, about uh, you know one of these faith-based prison ministries outreach mm -hmm. setups uh, where they were claiming all this massive success, right? And the whole idea behind this. Yeah, was, I found him that story actually. Oh, okay. See, see, we couldn't. I think. do it without <laughs> you. Um, but uh, I, of course, and. The advantage that they see to this is that well, they can they can tell all of the secularist uh, liberal types, you know, well look, I mean it's working. So what do you what would you rather have? Just this not haven't happen and it's not working. But of course, it, it was later uncovered that the reason it appeared that there was all of this reduced recidivism and what have you among guys who took part in the study was that they were really fudging the figures on it. Right. You know, they was they were um, first off, you had to stay in the study all the way through. You had to stay in this, in the, not the study, the program, all the way through to the bitter end. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the number of guys who were managing that was only maybe like 30% right. or some, some low figure. So they took that small percentage and just say, all right, well, 100% of these guys. No, it was worse than that. Yeah. Uh, staying in the program all the way through means getting out and getting, getting a out, job. Getting a job. Really, yeah, <laughs> so, staying, getting out so and staying So it's out. simple. If you narrow down the field that you look at <laughs> to just people who got a job, mm -hmm. you know, that skews it. Mm -hmm. uh, much more than actually being in the program. Mm -hmm. But what it turned out was that among people who enter the program in the first place, regardless of whether they finish or not, 
um, their recidivism rate was actually slightly worse than the overall prison population. So in actuality, it would have been better if that program wasn't there at all. Yeah. So they, they completely had to cook the books in order to get this wonderful success rate that they were promoting. Yeah, um, it, it would be like, you know, taking a case study of all Christians who have never shot anyone and saying, look, 100% of these people have no never murder sh- record. Yeah, I never shot anyone. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, well, you know, what, what can you expect, of course, from a Bush, right? <laughs> I mean, right. this is, uh, that, that's what his entire administration is all about. You know, it's faith-based everything. Yep. And... Uh, a New Hampshire law requiring that a minor's parents be notified 40, 48 hours before she has an abortion was declared unconstitutional Monday, just two days before it was scheduled to go into effect. Hmm. Opponents had argued against the new law partly because there was no exception uh, provided to protect the minor's health. Similar laws have been struck down in other states, including Florida and Colorado. Mm. Yeah. Well, the uh, the problem there, and again, this is one of those, you know, the power of rhetoric mm-hmm. on the news, right? You know, you uh, the the, uh, the conservatives um, will say, well, a lot of these liberals don't want these parental notification laws for for. Um, you know, parents for abortion, you know, kids who want abortions. So they can just go have sex all willy nilly yeah, and, and then. Get they don't want responsibility and they, they don't think that parents should have rights and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, well, no, it's that you have to look at the entire situation and look at every single case and what the different factors could be involved. I mean, what if you have an underage girl who's pregnant because her dad raped her? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, are you going to demand saw, parental notification for that abortion? I saw an essay. Actually, yeah. I, I got linked to it like right before I was leaving to go to the show. Mm-hmm. And it was a, it was an essay where basically they'd collected a whole bunch of anecdotes from doctors mm-hmm. about pro-life people who got abortions. Uh, and, you know, when you're in a situation where you need an abortion, uh, you know, the, these people are immediately assume that their case is special and unlike any other. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and you know, some of the stories go into how, you know, they don't want to sit in the waiting room with the other people because those people are murderers and, and, <laughs> and sluts because, you yeah. know, they shouldn't have been sleeping around in the first place. And, and there were several stories about people who, like, you know, they had their abortion and then the very next day they were in front of the abortion clinic picketing it saying, don't, don't go in here and murder your babies. Wow. Yeah, that, so, would, that would be interesting to read that. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's oh, if I do it, it's different. Right. Uh, yeah. You know, I asked God, I prayed for His guidance, and He said it was fine mm-hmm. for me. Oh. Well, that that's kind of the rallying cry of Christians is that's different. <laughs> <sighs> All right. What else? You know, uh, I want uh, Ten Commandments monument. Well, do you want somebody else's monument for for their religion? Well, that's, that's different. different. <laughs> Uh, but what about all these horrible instances where, you know, God is like killing people by the thousands? Oh, that's the Old Testament. Right. Well, what about putting up the Ten Commandments in schools? Oh, that's different. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, in international news, um, let's see. There was an earthquake in Iran hmm. that you may have heard about. Yeah. Uh, anybody know the death toll right now? Uh, last I, I heard. was 40. Heard- 30, 40,000? Oh, it's, kinda, it's that high. No, I, I don't know. This story says 30,000, but it's yeah. like... It's, it's bad, whatever Almost it is. a week old. What? Yeah. 38,000. 38,000. Thank you. Oh. Um, terrible tragedy. Mm-hmm. Um, but in another incident that shows how God just can't lose in these cases, yeah. uh, even in Islam... Um, oh, shoot. Where'd it go? Uh. Sorry, uh, a woman, ah, okay, Tahera, Taherian, a 45-year-old housewife, said she lost her, uh, she lost 60 family members in the quake. Wow. God is testing us, she said. I'm thanking God because one of our sons has been left alive. Well, one out of 60? Well, yeah, well. Well, that's a good, pretty good track record for an omnipotent being. Right. Yeah. Of course, uh... <laughs> Oh, if that I mean, one had been killed, she could always say, I'm thanking God that uh, I wasn't killed. That I wasn't killed. Yeah. And then if she was killed, then it wouldn't matter. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's appalling. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, uh, I yeah. understand. Which is that, not to lay, make light of this tragedy. No, I mean, it's, it's horrible. I can't believe board, we always it, have to say that. I, I, it's, uh, you know, it, it's just amazing how, okay, and I understand, right, 
how it is that it is it is the natural reaction of a religious person to turn to their beliefs when some horrible, unexpected tragedy hits, right? right. And then they have to deal with all this cognitive dissonance yes. of having this belief that there's a God who loves them, but this horrible tragedy just happened to them, which mm -hmm. theoretically shouldn't happen. So they come up with all these excuses and all of these ways in which to spin it so that it's still okay to worship this God, that he's still up there smiling on you. Right. Even if it goes to the crazy extent of saying, oh, well, I lost 60 family members, but one survived, so I'm thanking God for that. Right. It's, well, it's that old uh, example of confirmation bias again. Mm. Uh, you know, you start with a belief, God is good, and nothing can change that belief, so you look for evidence that tends to confirm your belief and throw out evidence that tends to uh, not confirm it. Um, and in that way, you never get anything that uh, challenges your overall perception of things. Right. Huh. Um, well, I mean, you know, very sad uh, that um, that that happened to, yes. to, to that that whole part of the world. But you know, sometimes you just kind of right. have to shrug your. I mean, it's very, it's difficult to be a rationalist, you know, in the confronted with these situations uh, yeah. because you know our our natural reaction is people. What is it going to take, right. right, to make you realize? Look, we're here, we're on our own, but that's fine, and we got to look out after out for each other, and mm -hmm. uh, all the rest is just you know. It, I just think if it just. You know, you think religion is like this house of toothpicks, right? Right. And, th you know, stuff happens that keeps punching holes in the walls of this house of toothpicks. You know, and you think that, you know, ultimately the logical thing that would happen would be the, the, the whole house would come crumbling down at a certain point, And then people would be free of that and, and, and then be able to look at things more rationally. But no, what happens with believers is they see all these holes getting punched into the house of toothpicks and they just start piling more toothpicks on <laughs> No. Okay, that's an interesting so, analogy. Yeah. Well, you know, I was just on the fly. <laughs> um, there, there's uh, this story is mainly about the uh, efforts to rebuild the ruined city of Bam, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, Which, I'd like to emphasize that that when things improve in Iran, it will be the work of people. Yeah. You make some remark so. about. Bam being a rather you know, unfortunate name for a town that just yeah. got hit with an earthquake. Well, but, uh, good luck to them. Anyway. Yeah, but uh, it's not the time. So, uh, and I've got some somewhat unfortunate news about Howard Dean. I'm afraid, oh. who uh, so far I kind of like. Um, yeah, I kind of like him. I'm a little bit more of a Clark man myself. Yeah, but that's well personal. Uh, presidential contender Howard B. H Howard B. Dean, who has said little about religion while campaigning except to emphasize the separation of church and state, described himself in an interview with The Globe as a committed believer in Jesus Christ and said he expects to increasingly include references to Jesus and God in his speeches as he stumps in the South. <sighs> The move is striking for a man who has steadfastly kept his personal life out of the campaign, rarely offering biographical information, much less his religious beliefs. But in the Globe interview, Dean said that Jesus was an important influence in his life and that he would probably share with some voters the model Dean has served for him, the model Jesus has served for him. Christ was someone who sought out people who were disenfranchised, people who were left behind, Dean said. He fought against self-righteousness of people who had everything. He was a person who set an extraordinary example that has last 2,000 years, which is pretty inspiring when you think about it. Mm -hmm. And yesterday on uh, The Nonprofits, Jeff made the interesting point that how... You know, Howard Dean is is using the language of a good liberal mm -hmm. to describe what he the characteristics of Jesus that he likes. You know, he True. he stuck up for the underdog and the downtrodden, right. And against uh, you know sloth and privilege, or, and you know, and uh, right. You know, none, none of that. God is a consuming fire. Yeah, kind none of, of that quotes. stuff. Right. It's all. It's um. all. You know, this this is the the hippie liberal Jesus that Howard Dean likes. So you know, right. it's just you well, know, you know, it's, it's not a, entirely you know, unexpected. I mean, these no. days candidates all mention their religion sooner or later. Yeah, I mean, and you Dean gotta, said he's going after Southerners, really so yeah. you know. But you know, it's it's just a shame that uh, you know, even with somebody that you think is you know going to be, um, I still think he's a good guy. Right. You know, I think he would do a good job leading the country, but uh, you know, just the realities of politics is that these are the sales pitches that you yeah. have to do, and um, it's it's kind of ironic that, uh, or it's not really not really so much ironic, but it's just sort of uh, it's dismaying at any rate that uh, 
So many Christi- believers don't you know, see Christianity that. Christianity is is like a qualification for office, in spite yeah. of the fact that we have no religious test. Yeah, it's unlikely that any atheist would mm-hmm. be elected president or or even congressperson for yeah. many years to come. At least, yeah, at least for the foreseeable future. So paying lip service to that is a good political move, yeah. and I understand. But it's it, so obviously lip service, and I don't, you know, see why you know more believers don't look at the situation and say. This guy's just saying this because he knows I'm a Christian. He wants me to vote for him. Mm-hmm. You know, he's just trying to. He's just telling me what I want to hear. You know, he's and he's exploiting my beliefs to to win me over to his to right. give, give him my vote. You know, it's so so. Yeah, you know, Republicans. You're right. Republicans and Democrats do it in equal measure, and it's it's right. obvious that that's why they're doing it. But so many people just kind of seem to shrug and not have a moral issue with it. Yeah. Or or you know or just uh, or any sort of issue in, in terms of thinking that uh, this is not uh, this is trivializing their beliefs. I mean the the thing. amount that Dean has done this cannot come close to being a oh. tiny fraction <laughs> of what Bush has been doing. Well, no, I mean that's whole Bush's whole career. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, and, American theocracy. And, you know, which is also ironic considering the way Bush acts in other ways. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's it. So. Uh, so, what so about that? Is that the news then? Yeah, that's pretty much okay. the news. Um, well, there's just a recent report uh, to the effect that, um, I, uh, speaking again of Bush's faith based everything in the world, mm-hmm. uh, I had read some report that there, there are uh, attempts being made to have creationist literature in the gift shops at the Grand Canyon. Wait, what does that have to do with Bush? It, it's part of because these are state parks, and this is part of Bush's faith-based. Uh, apparently, this is where it's originating. Hmm. And so, uh, so is this indirectly a result of some kind of policy that he's made? Uh, it would seem to be. I, I've I've only read scattered reports of it. I'm trying to get more information about it. Okay. Um, but you know, so, can you just so imagine literature saying, you know, <laughs> you know, this was all created in, in a big flood. In the flood, yeah, and you know, God, our God just scooped out the Grand Canyon with his thumbnail or something. Yeah, just, no. Can you imagine going to the I, Grand Canyon? I think Canyon? the flood thing is most popular with creationists, uh, not the probably. thumbnail thing. Yeah. No, oh, well, yeah, but um, whatever. I mean, just the whole idea of having this kind of literature in some state park, uh, you know, in in the in the gift shops, where you really ought to be getting like legitimate. You know, like geogra- geologically and scientifically valid, you know, mm-hmm. popular. Well, text. like who's paying for it? Well, it's it, it's the it, it's a, it's a federal. I mean, is um, monument? So monument uh, or not monument? You know, just you know what they call pamphlet. it. Pamphlet. No, or, no. The, the Grand Canyon itself is, is it's it's a it's a. Oh it's no, a I'm I'm talking about deal, who's so. paying for the pamphlets. Oh, you mean who's publishing them? Uh, yeah, I mean... You that know, I don't know. Is it taxpayer dollars doing it? I, I mean, I understand... That would be a issue. way to look... Yeah, that would be an issue to, you know... Yeah, I, I mean, if it's not, I still understand the issue about it being on public property, but yeah. it wouldn't seem like that big a deal. I mean, you know, people put ridiculous stuff in shops all the time. Yeah, and, but uh, it, but those are privately owned shops. Right. And this is, a, this is a, you know, the gift shop, at which I guess is on part of the uh, the whole, the federal property, the, the federal yeah. land. So um, I'm trying to get more information about that and get some details on it for next week. But, um, you know, this is all just with Jeb Bush and his faith-based prisons, and this is just Bush trying to do, you know, this is all part of the move towards theocracy in America. Well, I, that, I th- as usual, I think it's part of the wedge strategy. Yeah. You know, it's exactly. it's them attempting to, like, <laughs> you know, poke creationism here and there, uh, oh. impringe itself on national consciousness so that people eventually get to the point where they're like, hmm, Evolution is a hotly contested theory among, <laughs> among people who know what they're talking about. <laughs> uh, boy. Um, yeah. Well, uh, now next to religion itself or the Bush administration or many other things we could name, mm-hmm. there are few things in the world, or at least in this country, as full of crap as the Fox News Channel. Hmm. I think that that's... a. Uh, Pretty fair statement, wouldn't you? And balanced. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, so, my folks were in town for Isaac Newton's birthday, mm-hmm. and uh, they were in there. We were, I were just hanging out in their hotel room and um, getting ready to go have dinner. And you know, they had Fox News on. And I'm like, "Why the hell are you guys watching Fox News?" Like, well, we don't know. There's nothing else on. <laughs> you know. Uh, but this report comes on, and uh, it, it's already the case with TV news that so much of what is reported especially on these 24-hour news channels, 
or there really isn't, they can't seem to really scrape up 24 hours worth of news to show. So there are a lot of these, you know, f- phony news reports. There's all these manufactured controversies, right? You know, contrived reports just so that they can have something to have some kind of special on, right? I this mean, re- let's face it. There's enough news in a day to fill about two hours tops. Yeah, yeah. At least you know that 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 would be of nationwide interest, yeah. certainly. Um, I mean, we on the nonprofits, we do an hour and a half a week, <laughs> yeah. or every two weeks, right? And uh, <laughs> well. That's a lot. That's, yeah, and, and you, you guys cover a lot of stuff. But in any event, this, there's this. Uh, the, the, apparently, what Fox News has done is they have jumped on this bandwagon of promoting the idea that Christians are under attack from all sides. Right? Boy, there's one I haven't heard yeah. before. And and they went on to talk about all these supposedly negative media stereotypes of Christians that are out there constantly being promoted. Right. And uh, I had quite a lot to say about this, but. Um, <laughs> First, what was very amusing about the report was that the only actual examples in the media of the evil stereotypes of Christians that they say are a proof that Christians are under attack mm-hmm. from all sides. Uh, they came up, they had some clips from South Park, you know, like that Jesus cable access show on South Park. <laughs> and uh, they had Ned Flanders from The Simpsons, <laughs> which, which I guess is. Oakley Doakley. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, which, you know, yeah, he's a parody. I don't think he's a mean-spirited parody, but he's a, you know. You know, I think he's kind of cute. I, I, mean, I, I know, you know a lot of people think he's funny. You know, little, yeah, it's like <laughs> the little kids and, yeah. Uh, so there was that. They, uh, they tried to claim that the reason Mel Gibson is being criticized for his Jesus movie mm-hmm. is that he, is, he, has, he has made a movie that portrays Jesus positively. That's why they're mm. trying to claim he's being attacked. It's not, no, when the real reason that there are critics out there of his movie is because there is this fear that there might be some anti-Semitic sentiment expressed in the way the whole thing is dramatized. Mm-hmm. It's not that he's made a pro-Jesus movie. Hollywood's full of pro-Jesus movies. I mean, they, they, right. they made their bread and butter on pro-Jesus movies for so many years. Right? Ben-Hur, greatest story ever told. Hollywood made, has made lots of money on pro-Jesus movies. Well, they, they but, would probably say that was way back in the time before Jesus was under attack. <laughs> well, they could say that, but those movies are still popular. But I mean, right? you know, all these in- evangelical movies are becoming mainstream now, like that mm-hmm. Left Behind horrible, awful movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the book was much, certainly much bigger than the movie. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, yeah. Um, but, so that was another example. So they distorted the reason that Mel Gibson was being attacked. And they also, finally, they listed it as an example of anti-Christian media stereotypes. They listed the movie Bad Santa. Have you seen Bad Santa? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay. Well, I mean, it's, I thought it was very funny. It's filthy, right? Not for everybody. I'd be more but, impressed if it was called Bad Jesus. <laughs> Well, but we are biased. Um, but anyway, you know, th- this is first off, it's not a movie that's an attack on on, on Christianity. It's, it's not even a movie that's attack on, it's, that's an attack on the Christmas holiday mm-hmm. itself, which is another thing that some Christians have said. And it's not even an attack on this mythic figure of Santa Claus that we're all supposed to love for right. Christmas. You know, what it is, it's just this, it's this story about this guy who's a total loser, right? Mm-hmm. Just this schmo who is a small time hood. And he gets a job as a mall Santa because it's the easiest way for him to scope out stores to rob in the mall. Okay, that's the premise of the movie. Um, but even if, you know, you could look at uh, Santa Claus, even if Santa Claus had its roots in some sort of Christian mythic figure like, uh, you know, St. Nicholas, right? Mm-hmm. Santa Claus, as he's understood today, has been completely secularized and is so far removed from who St. Nicholas was. Well, more than that, uh, I think a lot of Christians object to the emphasis on Santa. Yeah. You know, they, they hate it that there's so much talk about Santa Claus and stuff. And not enough because, about Jesus. You know, it's not, you know, because it's really about Jesus' birthday. Yeah, it's, Jesus is the reason for the season, right? So you think, so, so in this movie, it's not even that you have Santa. <clears throat> As, as, you know, the figure of spoof, it's, it's a mall Santa. Okay? And, if, and mall Santas are nothing. If, if they're symbols of anything, I, I would think that they were symbols of this commercialization of Christianity that Christians are supposed to have a lot of disdain for. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, when it is expedient for them, when if Fox News is trying to contrive this article that Christians are under attack mm-hmm. from all sides, okay, then suddenly Santa becomes a Christian figure. And, of course, they had that, you know, fat bastard Falwell came on and you know, spouted some of his opinions. <laughs> but 
you know, in order to be... You're attacking him. You're actually... Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I, I'm an atheist. into that. <laughs> I'll say what I want. This is an atheist show. Here we are. Uh, Austin Media. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... Call out the reporters. <laughs> in the interest of being fair and balanced, right? Well, fucks his little thing. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, you know, they had a, another guy come on and, uh, you know, sort of give the opposing view and said, look, what is everyone whining about? You know, you have all of this... There's a ton of pro-Christian media, right? You've got... Uh, you know, Touched by an Angel, and I think there's, like, another show that just started up uh, recently uh, that's this, you know, very pro-God, pro-belief. Um, you know, there are those Left Behind books, which yes. are ridiculous bestsellers. You know, Christian pop is out there and selling, and, and so what's, you know, what's the big deal? But, right, I would but, say that Christianity is going stronger than it's been in a long in time. In ages, you know? Yeah. I mean, at least since the early part of the century, right? At least uh, in America, Yeah. I mean... Uh, and fundamentalism specifically. But, you know, being Fox News being Fox News, they finally had to wrap up the article by saying, and, uh, you know, when will the when will Hollywood learn that attacking Christians is a stupid idea? And, uh, and so it ended up being, mm -hmm. you know, ultimately their spin on it was reinforced. But it yeah. was just so, so ridiculous. You know, just this, this, this whole, and you have to wonder, you know, they, uh, uh, they they like to boast about the fact that they've got 80, 90 percent of the population of America is Christian and it's in their pockets and where this yeah. great majority. But when it suits them, suddenly they're an oppressed minority. Right. Yeah. And it's just. <laughs> well, the, the whole idea about Christianity being under attack mm -hmm. is part of an overall mode of thinking that mm -hmm. faith is something you're not supposed to criticize. I mean, criticism mm -hmm. is regarded as attack. Right. By any normal sane scholars criticism is just you know par for the course i mean yeah. i mean every discipline has criticism it has to be open to critical analysis but sure. when you're talking about christianity uh you know if you if you mention something not so favorable then it's an attack mm -hmm. uh it's like uh an essay or uh, it's like an interview that Douglas Adams did with uh, uh, with American Atheists once, which mm -hmm. I always like to quote from, which is where he he talked about how he uh, became an an uh, sort of uh, devout atheist, so to speak. <laughs> um, you know, he said he was in college studying how all these different subjects are are just you know scrutinized to death. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, how if somebody proposes a theory of, of why the corn laws were passed, uh, you know, then there will be all sorts of arguments and back and forth stuff. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about, but when you're talking about apologetics, it just doesn't come under that kind of scrutiny. And the reason, mm -hmm. he says, is because it just wouldn't stand up to it. Yeah. And, but, but you're right, people, they avoid it in the first place because we, you know, belief is just this one thing that is supposed to be exempt right. from the same sort of critical standards. That human beings apply to just about anything else, you know, whether it's buying a used car. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind. For, I don't mind when people tell me I'm wrong. Yeah, we, you know, we love, I argue with them. You listen to a lot of like, uh, like right wing radio and Christian radio. Sure, I love that crap. Yeah, oh, can and I say they, that? Uh, yes, you can say that. <laughs> it's criticism. It's fair game. Um, but uh, they don't. I mean, when they get callers critical of them, it's not a. You know, they. When they don't just hang up on them outright, mm -hmm. it's it usually tends to be uh, you know not there's not this back and forth. Yeah, right? well, more often mm -hmm. they're just screened out. Yeah, uh, right, or they're just screened out in the first place. We like hearing on this show from people who disagree with us because because yeah. like I said, cri you know, uh, criticism is what launches interesting debates. Sure, and it helps people reach a consensus about things and, and ideas about things and how things you know uh, work or don't work. Uh, and if you stifle criticism, then you just have, you know, what, all you have is this dogmatic, uh, you know, Orwellian uh, system where no one's allowed to think about stuff yep. freely. And then you just get this festering kind of undercurrent of unease. And that, that's not good for any civilization. Right. You know? I mean, you know, intellectual honesty thrives on criticism, mm -hmm. whatever kind it is. Right. So what is about this, um, oh, this, this uh, website you found? Well, um, Okay. We'll, we'll start uh, getting the names racked up. And uh, uh, 477 228 is the number to call us live, and we'll start taking calls here in just a minute, okay? Okay. Well, uh, talking about Christianity and Christmas in particular coming <laughs> under attack, right. there's a website that I stumbled across. <laughs> uh -huh. It's www.grinchlist.com. Okay. And they are dedicated to exposing corporate Grinches. Corporate Grinches. Who hate Christmas. And the uh, evidence that they hate Christmas mm -hmm. is that 
Well, let me just read something from their site. Okay. Have you ever wondered why the public celebration of Christmas is an endangered tradition? <laughs> Stroll into many Whoa. retail stores. <laughs> Wait a minute. What else is the weather in their alternate universe? <laughs> and you will soon learn that most references to Christmas have been eliminated. Instead, what you'll find is a not-too-subtle version of censorship that attempts to expunge any association of Christmas with the holiday season. Moreover, you'll notice an aggressive marketing approach that substitutes traditional Christmas nomenclature with the term Holiday. <sighs> I'm terrified. I don't know about you. So I guess all of these, you know, so, G- Jesus and Mary products that I saw in, in stores over the holidays were just optical illusions. Or any store that has a sign saying Happy Holidays is, uh, Cent- is, to censor. is a Grinch. Yes, yeah. they're censoring Christmas. Has nothing to do with saying, right, okay, look, we have some Christians who are our customers, but we also have people of other faiths and people of, you know, different backgrounds, but it should be a big holiday for everyone. So let's make this a holiday for everyone and not just this little clique mm-hmm. of people. It's not has, has nothing to do with that, apparently. It has to do with <laughs> censorship. But, Am I getting the, the gist of it? More? Uh, yeah. Okay. But, right. I mean, what's especially funny is, mm-hmm. uh, is this whole reason for the season shtick when uh-huh. we all know that Christmas was commandeered from the older solstice you know, pagan type. Yes, we do. And and, and if uh, if anyone's interested later on in the show, we can actually get into the history of that, of which I have some. Right. So their closing remarks on the site are... Uh, Christmas is a religion, culture, and tradition that can't be deleted like a mistake on a word processor. In fact, it's a faith that's grown in many parts of the world. From our perspective, it's a gift to the world that's celebrated with passion, joy, love, and, yes, a little commercialism. <laughs> but it's still Christmas. After all, there are all those Christian department stores and, yes. you know, the, the, uh, the, uh, you know what the Joshua's and the family shops and... Christian websites that want to sell you lots of stuff for Christmas. So yeah. a little commercialism is fine. Well, no, look, that's fine. Okay, like for them, if that they can, if they want to celebrate the holiday season in that way that is pertaining to their faith, no one is saying they shouldn't do right. it. But they're and, putting but up a list of corporations. Yeah. That's what and this... There, uh, but there are other people who, who aren't Christian, but, but, but because this is a big worldwide holiday time, they want to be able to celebrate in a certain way too. So let's, mm-hmm. you, know, you, you know, the Christians can have their religious Christmas celebrations. Non-Christians can have secular Christmas right. celebrations, and it's all good. What's the problem? You know, the I mean, problem is should, that everyone. Yeah, should goodness knows we Christmas. shouldn't like spread the joy in the holiday season. <laughs> we we should like restrict joy from other groups. Isn't that the case? Oh, well, apparently. All right. Well, see again. Under attack from all sides. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Who we got? Go- under attack. Um, I believe that was Scott on one. Scott is on line. What? Either that or he's Al Sharpton. Hi. You're on the air. How you doing? Hey, how's it going, Martin? We're good. We're good. What's up? Yes, I was just calling to see if I can come in your pussy, come in your pussy. Mm. Well, <laughs> sorry. Oh, uh, okay, I don't think that was Al Sharpton, actually. Uh, <laughs> no, that uh, might have been one of the uh, you know, queer after straight guy guys. But uh, line two. How's it going? You're on the air. Uh, hi. How are you doing? We are fine. All right. Um, earlier, whenever you were going over the news, you talked about the woman from, I believe it was Iran, Iran. or the, Iran, yeah. the earthquake. Yeah, the earthquake. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she had lost like 60 family members. Mm-hmm. Right. That, oh, that is bad. But um, do you think that there's any value in us going through life-changing events like that, such tragic events, the suffering? Do you think there's much to be gained in the virtues that we have and... Well, it depends. In some cases, yes. In some cases, no. But there certainly wasn't much value for those 60 people who died. Yeah. We're all going to die anyways. Okay. Well, so but... you're saying it's okay that they died. You're happy with God doing that. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, 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 point, what we were, the point we were t- trying to make in, in discussing the, uh, that particular article... Uh, and, and I'll get to your original question uh, here in a second, but uh, it, it's, it's the way in which you know, people who have some sort of devout faith or belief system uh, will simply not you know, look at the big picture when it comes to, you know, wait a minute, okay, 
supposedly yeah. I'm being looked after and this is not happening and, and uh, you know, but you no, know, what they do is they spin it in such a way to where they still have an excuse to believe in God, even though the evidence of their tragedy should let them know, look, you're not really being watched over by a supernatural source. So that was kind of what I we understand getting. what you're yeah. saying. But, but now getting back to your original question of does suffering have a benefit, I think that, well, you know, um, I don't know that I would see the benefits uh, to you know losing a family member or a loved one in in, in such a tragedy. Now, if, if suffering happens to you as an individual, um, it, I guess it would depend on uh, again the circumstance, what kind of thing that you had to suffer, and how you as a person allowed that to shape your character. Yeah, because there are and, certainly count you know lots yeah. of instances where people have a very bad thing happen to them, and you know they they look for the positive yeah. and and try to make the best out of a bad situation. And that's a good thing. But well, when shows... you come right down to it, and you ask them, so would you have been better off? Uh, if that person hadn't died, I I would guess that more often than not, mm -hmm. with exceptions, they would say, "No, I'd really rather that my you know sixty members of my family didn't die." Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's understandable, but there's still an opportunity for growth whenever bad things do happen to us. Yeah, well, there's course, yes. opportunity for growth when good things happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah when, when you have it a... catches our attention yeah. more whenever bad things happen. Well, sure, but didn't catch the attention of those people. Well. It, well, I mean, it's it's caught the attention of the rest of the world, which is yeah. the point. I mean, yes, the um, it, it's it it offers an opportunity for growth because I think that if you look at the situation from a rational perspective, when you have a tragedy that you can't help afflict you, like an earthquake, you, know, mm -hmm. you can't really help that if you happen to live there and an earthquake hits you, and so you can't help what's happened. Um, there really are only two options available to you. Uh, at the time, you can either fall completely into despair, which could lead to, you know, suicide or, or just, you know, a, 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 a remain, you know, a life of woe, or you can say, I must, I must overcome. I have to deal with this. I have to get on because, I, you know, they died and I'm still alive and I have to still live day to day. And uh, so it, it's again, it's 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 how you react and respond to the tragedy that determines what your character is as a person. And not everybody's going to have the strength of character to overcome it ever um not every you know some people it may take years and years and years to get over something like that some people it might take not so long um and it, it doesn't mean that you're a good or a bad person if you do or don't but it's you're right they do provide these opportunities for growth but i think that just to just to not live a life of of complete agony you have to overcome sure yeah. and, you know you have to just find your way through it and you know, and, and you can do that. I mean, and, and understandably, religious people will turn to their faith to do it. But it's, it's, it, what's a sh what is a shame is that, um, you know, it, you would think that, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, in all reality, that helped a lot of people uh, avoid despair and it realize helps. that it might, it might be okay after a while uh -huh. rather than someone who's a rationalist and doesn't yeah. believe in God that, you know, they might get bogged down in the despair part easier. Yeah. I believe. I'm, I'm not getting bogged uh, down in despair. Yeah. But what? you don't have a, a somebody who you don't have 60 friends who've died. So <laughs> that's yeah. certainly I mean true. that that would so, yeah, and that would certainly knock you know hit and knock anybody for a loop. Um, yeah. yeah, you're right. It does help people uh, avoid despair. Unfortunately, what I think that it also leads to is down the road, once they have you know um, kind of gotten through the worst of it. Uh, there is now kind of a deeper commitment to a, a form of irrationalism that will, I think, hurt their ability to make sound decisions in the future. Because what you've dealt with is this situation that has presented you with a really strong cognitive dissonance, which is, on the one hand, you have the belief saying, you know, there's a God and he watches after me. And, um, you know, he, he's good and he doesn't want bad things to happen to me. So, so I can trust him and love him and believe in him. And then, bam, earthquake happens. And so in order to protect that belief, one ha you have to start making all kinds right. of explanations well, of course, and excuses. Uh, we're not really talking about whether the earthquake was a good thing on balance. We're talking yeah. about whether it's good for that particular woman to have had her Islamic faith. And, yeah. you know, in a, in a way, I certainly would agree that uh, she's probably happier now that she had something to latch on to. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it calls to mind the, a quote by George Bernard Shaw that I like, which was, you know, the fact that a uh, religious person may be happier than an atheist is, uh, you know, of no more consequence than the fact that a drunk person is happier than a sober one. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's uh, yeah, it, 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 yeah it, it's, it has to do with, um, you know, having a sound way of looking at reality. And I don't think that there, while there are certainly comforts to religious belief and paranormal beliefs and, uh, you know, that, that, that people do naturally, and I think it's cultural influence, flock to those beliefs in a way to deal with tragedies. I think ultimately in the long run, the effect can be worse because now you have a, sort of a person who will only deal with these situations by, you know, absorbing themselves into this irrationality and not being able to say, okay, look, you know, we've got to, you know, I have to face these things. I have to get over it. You know, there, I, you know, there's, there's, there's no guardian angel sitting on my shoulder. I have to be alert. I have to take care of myself. You know, I have to watch out for my loved ones and the, my community and the people around me. You know, let's come together and make this all work out. Whereas, you know, just falling back into the, you know, I think, I think it's actually capitulation to despair, really, when you're, uh, when you just throw up your hands and say, oh, well, God, please take me and preserve me. I can't deal with this. Well, hopefully most people don't do that. Most yeah. people who believe in a God mm-hmm. don't do that. Just throw up their hands and say, okay, I'm yeah. going to be okay from now until the end of my life. Yeah. Hopefully they'll try to work on other things with with their their conscience and their their, yeah. their mentality and everything that would help them with other types of things in the future. Well, yeah, you, know, you would hope so. Like I said, it, it's difficult in circumstances like these where you have, you know, yeah. great tragedies to to just be a rationalist and take this sort of detached approach and say, well, no, I mean, it's you know, it's you should just, you know, let's get rid of God now. I mean, this should be should this should be enough evidence that you're not being taken care of by divine source. We need to we need to handle these things on our own. Of course, because you can sound insensitive, right. but we don't mean to. Overall, I mean, the question of whether believing in Christianity <laughs> mm-hmm. makes people happier is a separate question from whether it's actually true or not. Yeah, I mean, and we can argue about you know whether it's better to have a false belief that makes you feel good that's mm-hmm. um but you know that's yeah. a different issue well it's so. not just christianity all the other religions. Sure. Yeah, i mean oh, this was, uh, uh, sorry islam yeah in this case There's islam but, 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 but anyone others. anyone lots of people from lots of different disciplines and belief systems do it so yeah. right but but, but you, you know good question being an atheist makes me happy so yeah. uh but although i don't rely on my atheism for my happiness. I no. derive my happiness from other things. But but that's a good question, and we really appreciate it, okay? Yeah. We're going to go ahead and go on to the next guy, but call us up any time, all right? right? Thank you. Take care. Bye. Okay. So, uh, James on three will be next. Hey, you're on the air. How's it going? I'm doing great, sir. How about you? We're fine. What's up? What would you like to talk about? Um, actually, uh, I just got angry because I am a Christian, mm-hmm. you know, and... Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm kind of emotional right now, but uh, I believe that uh, there is a God and there is a Jesus. I have been hit by a car, have been saved, there is a guardian angel. And from my viewpoint, being like you as an atheist, should understand with compassion and dignity of being an American, why don't you just give it a rest? Well, Jesus while we, alone. Well, uh, while we certainly understand that when r- believers experience tragedies, they do fall back upon their beliefs in a way to deal with those tragedies, and we understand that. And uh, like I was saying to the last caller, and when we when we gave when we were uh, reading that original article, it is it's very difficult. When, uh, you know, from people, people from our perspective, when these tragedies happen, you know, you, you, you want to be able to say, all right, let's look at this from a rational perspective, but then, of course, you certainly don't want to sound insensitive. So we don't want to sound insensitive to someone who has experienced what you've experienced and what have you. But um, on the bigger picture, you know, we, we think that ideas deserve to be debated and uh, belief systems deserve to have all different points of view aired out. And so, you know, so that people can discuss them publicly. And I'm sorry that if you feel that people who disagree with your beliefs are attacking you personally, you know, I'm sorry that you feel that way. It's not our desire on this show. You know, we're, we're not here on the program to attack or criticize people, okay, you know, as people. Uh, we're here to talk about belief systems, their usefulness, why we don't agree with prevailing religious belief systems, and uh, we know it's a sensitive topic, and so, um, you know, if your personal feelings have been hurt, that wasn't our intent. 
You know, we didn't say, okay, let's let's hurt this man's feelings. It's not what we're here for. Uh, but um, you know, the the to us, it's an interesting topic. You know, I mean, you you have people who believe in deities. You have people who believe in these supernatural powers. You have real things that happen in the real world that seem to come into conflict with these beliefs from a rational perspective. So let's discuss that. Let's uh, you know, let's examine them and debate them as issues. Um, not everyone will think that that's a, a good thing to do or an appropriate thing to do. Um, so, uh, you know, again, we, we don't wish to, uh, you know, I, I imagine that there are a great many people who are offended by the presence of our show in the first place and, and, and don't watch us and don't listen to us. And, and that is your freedom of choice. And, uh, uh, but, but it's kind of our freedom of choice to be here expressing our views and, and, uh, in, in a free and open debating forum. I also got another question I, for you. I would like to say, though, that I'm very sorry that we upset you so much. Yeah. I and mean, I, I mean that. Yeah. I got another answer for you, okay. which is uh, I am still emotional of uh, what the atheism stands for. And uh, no, no, what? the nice lady that was uh, an atheist, <laughs> Madame O'Hare. Well, I don't know how nice she was, but... Uh, and uh, yeah, I didn't think she was particularly is, nice. Uh, the problem with that was that uh, I'm not trying to say or threaten anybody, but the thing is that there is a Jesus and there is a God, and he's out there helping you every day. And why should the atheism decide not to believe of what could happen in the next future and the generation of younger people to die of every day by the government. Okay, I'm not quite sure what you're getting at, but but let me let me let me let me just ask you this then. Why why does it upset you so much to know that there are people in the world who don't believe the things that you believe in? Why does why is that a thing that makes you emotional? I mean, isn't that just a natural thing? I mean, not everyone in the world is the same. Not everybody has the same ideas about stuff. Not everybody comes from the same background. So why would it upset you that that people you know? Disagree with you know your beliefs or don't share them. I can understand why why it might why some people might um, okay say all right you're wrong and here's why and I'm going to criticize you or, and debate you but I don't understand why it upsets you and makes you emotional. Why is that? The, the reason why is because that uh, I'm supposed to be like my name is James right and uh, I'm supposed to be the defender of faith and Ooh. religion. From the biblical terms, from the Bible. Okay, so you were named after uh, James, and the disciple? Yes, sir. Okay. We have an atheist named Mark. I yeah. don't see that that... Well, yeah, but I mean, if that's, I mean, if he, you, you, you were, he, he was named after, and, and that's how, okay, and that's fine, and you have the, and that's great. You have the right to do that. Get out there in, 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 in this country and, and your, use your freedom of speech and defend your faith. That's fine. But, I, mean, uh, I mean, see, that, it doesn't upset us. So you were saying that you were upset, not not just because you know of what we had said earlier, uh, but specifically because of the fact that we don't share your beliefs. But see, it doesn't upset us that you that you don't agree with us. See, we think if we if we speak to people and and they think that there's a God, we don't get upset about that. We think, okay, well here you know, let's have a discussion about this. And and but and you indicated that just the mere fact that we were atheist was something that made you very upset and emotional. And I'm. Wondering why, you know, that, that should have to be. that You shouldn't have to get upset about that. I mean, why? So what? So we're atheists. So what? Why, do, why does that hurt you? Well, because that, uh, so many people that are non-believers should believe in things like, uh, I'm not trying to say like the Lord of the Rings should be a good topic, but uh, being a part of uh, Christianity is the best thing in the world for everyone else before this world comes to an end. Right. And it's coming close. Well, um, hey, you don't, I mean, again. I am relieved not to believe that. Yeah, see, that's, that doesn't sound to me like, like a belief that would be, you know, something Uplifting. that would make me happy. That doesn't sound to me that that would be part of a belief system that was, you know, the greatest thing for everyone. How is it the greatest thing for everyone to believe that the world is getting ready to come to an end? Why is that? There's nothing positive about that. That's that's despair. And 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 you again, sir. You're very emotional. You sound like you're on the verge of tears. It doesn't sound like that. You know, you're a happy man with holding these beliefs. 
I am. Maybe I'm misunderstanding, but I mean, you know, this, I mean, the overall situation, sir, I mean, just, we're not here to tell you, we, we're not here to tell you, James, don't believe that. But we just have to say, you know, it doesn't sound like it's, you know, something that would be very positive. So is That's it just wrong to become an Englishman? Uh, what do you mean, sir? I mean, my ancestry came from England. Okay. I came to America uh -huh. to uh, spread out Christianity because we want to have freedom of religion. That's fine. And that's great. And that's great. Yeah. And that, that's the best thing about our country is that you can have freedom of religion and people are allowed to discuss these issues, right? You don't live in some oppressive country like you know, Saudi Arabia or Afghanistan where no one's allowed to say anything, you know, and you get punished if you try to speak out and have debates like this. In, in America, what makes America so great is that we can have these discussions, right? Well, that is true, but yeah. uh, speaking publicly about mm -hmm. religion should be kept secret and not able to talk about it for anybody else. Why? But, doesn't believe. Why? Do you Why? think Why? that Christians shouldn't be allowed to speak about their religion? Well, that is true that we do. Yeah. So, and you're okay with that? I mean, yes, sir. Okay, but well, you're not okay with us speaking about our lack of religion? Well, your lack of religion believe, believes in the devil. No, we don't. No, earth, we don't believe in the devil. And uh, I think you guys do. No. I'm not trying to be attacked. No, no. Honestly, the, the de we think the devil is every the bit devil as imaginary. The devil is as... a supernatural concept, and we don't pretty much don't believe in any of those. Yeah, I mean that's not supernatural. The de that's, it was not. true in heaven, where she'd been again thrown but, down from earth, right? But down but, here, but we don't we don't we share those beliefs that he is here in existence. Uh -huh. Like anything else, like the earthquakes you mentioned, uh -huh. does not come from the Heavenly Father. He came from the man that runs the earth beneath us. And, well, okay, okay. see, well, we disagree. So God didn't want there to be an earthquake? Actually, uh, I'm not trying to be offensive to you. No, you're not offending no, us. that's fine. Nothing you say can offend us, all right? Well, Nothing you say can offend us. Just I could say that could offend you. Okay, but why would you want to do that? Why? Why? I mean, it's much easier, isn't it, to just discuss these issues, right? I mean, we don't want to say things to offend you. Yeah, we're not here to upset. We're you. We're not here to upset you and make you sad. But but we think that these topics are worth discussing. You know, I disagree with you when you say that these things shouldn't be talked about. Why shouldn't they be talked about? If the, if America is so great because it's a free society where people can talk about stuff, well, then we should do it. Is, uh being wrongful. I mean, but but people yeah. should be able to debate all sides of an issue, right? I know, but being okay. criticized is uh, like condemnation. Yeah, but we're not attacking you personally, right? We, we, we criticize the beliefs, but that doesn't mean we, we criticize every single individual person who believes them. You know, there's a difference, right, between criticizing an idea and criticizing the person. Right? Well, that okay. is true, though. Okay. So, look, we're going to go ahead and get on to our next caller, all right? But, you know, again, we didn't mean to offend you, but we think that these are situations are interesting, and these, these topics are interesting and worth debating. And, um, you know, try to think about these things, okay? Think about them and, uh, you know, call us back sometime because, again, we're, you know, if you want to or if you never want to watch us again because we upset you that much, that's your choice too. But, uh, again, it's all, it's, you know, exercise your choice. And, and decide what you want to do in the future, okay? But we're going to go ahead and move on to the next guy, all right? Sure. You take care and have a good day. Happy all New right. Year. Oh. Wow. That wow. was heavy stuff. I'm a uh, poor guy. I'm still unclear on whether God wanted the earthquake to happen or not. I, 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 don't, I don't think that, you know, again, I don't think yeah. James was, he was upset and not really thinking clearly throughout the whole call. Well, maybe so. Mark can answer. Yeah, but, um, yeah, I mean... Folks, we have to be honest. He did not sound like a happy individual. Now, I understand that there's jillions of happy Christians out there, right? But, um, you know, this is exactly the case of the cognitive dissonance I think uh, we were talking about. I would about. not presume to say that 
uh, that Christianity caused him to be unhappy. I mean, no. you know, lots of people are happy and unhappy sure. for reasons. Yeah. And he said, you know, he was in a car accident. Sound, sounded which is like terrible. It was a pretty harrowing experience. Yeah, which and, is terrible. I, am, you know, monk, I had an uncle who was in a bad sure car accident. believing something for comfort mm. was comforting yeah. at the time. Yeah, but, um, you know, we, um, we're not here to, uh, to gang up on him. You know, right. Who's next, Mark? Okay, next one. Hey, Mark, how's it going? Hey, not too bad. How are y'all guys doing? Uh, we're up? doing all right. What's up? Um, well, there's there's uh, two things I'd like to address. First of all, um, the the previous guy, James. Mm -hmm. I feel you know sorry for his uh, for his tragedy, but uh, sure, he made several personal attacks on atheism, which is I believe is wrong. I mean, the whole. Sure. Madeline Murray O'Hare thing, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't um, even well, know I what that, he was going to say about that. Yeah, I mean, he, a lot of the things he said, he wasn't very clear because he was so upset. Yeah, yeah, and, and emotions can can uh, sway person uh, yeah. a person to do things. But uh, there have been just as many evil, you know, uh, mm -hmm. religious people in uh in you know in the past. So I don't I don't think that that's a feasible argument. Also, mm -hmm. just about every single major war has been based on religion. Uh, in the past, at least, uh, maybe not in the past hundred years or so, but before that, you know, there were the Crusades, and I, mean, I, I would hesitate to make that kind of sweeping generalization. I mean, I'll I'll be with you as far as a, a hell of a lot of wars were were uh, consequences of religion. Yeah, yeah. But um, well, I don't know. I just I just wanted to say that, and uh, yeah. and I went to uh, actually a Catholic school, and it and it didn't sure. it made me less of a believer. And uh, now I'm I'm pretty much an atheist, and I believe that people should uh, have faith in themselves before they put faith in something that they uh, that's that's not tangible. But well, uh, I wanted to talk actually about uh, a good side of uh, of suffering mm -hmm. and uh, oh, okay. no pain. Mm -hmm. Well, if we never suffer in our life, mm -hmm. if we never have some sort of negative experience, and everything is just positive and good and happy and joyous, and uh -huh. then you know how do we know that it's actually happy and joyous? You know it, it mm -hmm. you know it it. Suffering and bad times make the good times mm -hmm. seem that much better. Yeah. No pain, no gain. Exactly. Sure. And if we didn't have that constant cycle of ups and downs and ups mm -hmm. and downs, if we were just on a straight line, everything would be the same and our lives would be boring and, mm -hmm. and people would, would never never emotionally or spiritually grow. I mean, sure. I'm, a, I'm a spiritualist. Well, I mean, well you know, I'm, I'm I mean, an, you know, you know right. I have to agree with you there. I mean, every single book and movie and, and story that's worth anything has to have something bad in the beginning happen because Comfort. the point of having the story is to have a character struggle against that because that's what makes stories interesting. Yeah, they grow as you a know, character You, you read something like Brave New World where they try to shield their entire society from anything uh -huh. bad ever happening. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and and it's just some sort of nightmarish dystopia, at least in that book. But, right. You know, having said that, does that mean that we shouldn't be upset about particular e extremely bad things that happen? Does that mean that we shouldn't work to minimize bad stuff from happening? Oh, of course not. No, 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 of course not. And what is interesting, though, and and, and this excellent point, Mark, about you know, there's the the uh, you know the growth aspects of suffering. Um, Christians will apologists will attempt to uh, refute the problem of evil by bringing up essentially the point that Mark has just made about the the growth benefits of right. suffering, right? That you know, without without advers you know adversary, you know, or um, without adversity. I'm sorry, without mm -hmm. adversity in life, there is no growth, there is no change, there is no uh, experience that helps you become a better individual. And God knows this, which is why, even though He's supposedly this loving, good God. Um, who who doesn't want anything bad to happen to you? He doesn't interfere when bad stuff happens to you because you need that to learn the lesson. Right. Okay, and now that's all well and good, uh, except for a few details. <laughs> um, uh, if if the only people in life who ever ended up getting hurt because of dumb decisions they made were the people who made the dumb decision, mm -hmm. and then they got hurt and they learned the lesson and they grew from that. And God's like, aha, there, you see? So you won't do that again, will you? And I'm like, no, thanks, God. That, then I could, under, I could accept that as a defense uh, against the problem of evil, you know, as being something that supposedly refutes God's omniscience and omnibenevolence and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, you have, when you have situations like, uh, okay, uh, you know, a child being raped. All right? Yeah. Now, what, you, have, you have a hopeless, innocent victim there, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what exactly is the lesson? Now, who all is involved? Okay, who, uh, you have 
you know, the little victim right. who is you now damaged forever. Okay, assuming that they, you know, that she's not killed in the well, bargain. Well, again, some yeah. people, you know, try to seek out the... Pu- I mean, you know, <laughs> try to make the best of a situation and do recover. What, yeah, and but what I'm saying is, what it, how, 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 far, how far is it reasonable to assume that these lessons have to go? Right. right? I mean, there, it's one thing to, like, max out your credit card and get in debt or some <laughs> dumb thing like that. Yeah. Okay, that hurts you. But, uh, you know, what exactly what lesson is learned from, like, a child being raped? Right, or, and, you know, and then in the case of that earthquake again, you know, yeah. regardless of what that one particular woman learned from losing all of her family, those 60 people are dead. They're not learning anything. They can't anything. learn lessons, yeah. yeah. I mean, so, so, you know, it's no good to somebody to be dead so they can teach someone else a lesson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so Especially if they go to hell. <laughs> yeah. So, the, so again, the, the point you make, Mark, is really sound, but I think that, again, it's a stronger, uh, you know, uh, argument for the value of suffering without the necessity of a god to explain suffering yeah, well, and what have, what have you. Well, uh, suffering to an absolute extreme like that is, is nothing but bad. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about like little, like, you know, you break your arm. Right, you know? yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, you know, not, I mean, those things are really evil. Yeah. But, uh. Yeah. We were just making the point about the problem of evil as, uh, as and, and, and its defense, you know, and the, the apologists who argue against it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but but yeah, I, I, you're right. I mean, there's there's uh, without any sort of uh, adversity in your life, what do you learn? You know, I mean, if you just get to sit in a recliner forever and read comic books and <laughs> play video games and you experience nothing, you you really it's <laughs> you just don't have a life. Yeah, you know, and uh, that's that's no fun. So no. get out there, you know, taking a few risks is what life is all about. That's, but, I totally agree with yeah. that. So we appreciate it, Mark. Thanks a bunch. Oh, thanks a lot. Hey, right. uh, keep questioning authority. All right, man. Have a good New Year. You too. Bye bye. <laughs> Fox News. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, who is next, Eric or Joseph? Eric's on line two. Hi, hey, you're on the air. What's up? Oh uh, yeah, I just had a couple questions. They're not going to be too long. Um, number one, what exactly does the atheist, you know, experience? What What does it stand for as a, a community as a whole? Okay. Uh, and all right. Uh, well. The Atheist Community of Austin was basically an organ, uh, a little, just a little club set up to be a social group for atheists. And, um, you know, many atheists in our society, because our society is so predominantly religious, most people are Christian or, you know, are, are religious to some degree, uh, it's very difficult for atheists to find other atheists and, and feel comfortable talking about the fact that they don't believe in God. So groups like ours are a way to say, hey, you know, want to meet some other folks and, and uh, make some other atheist friends? Here's a way, you know, here's right. a way one, to do it. One aspect of religion that I would acknowledge is very pos- positive is that it gives people a social outlet. And yeah, uh, for the most part in most of the country, uh, non-believers lack that sort of thing. So uh, yeah. this is one thing. So that's mainly it. So there as are, a there non-believer, are, does that mean that the atheists actually do believe in something? It's just not necessarily a deity? Well, we don't believe it's in an super... I- an idea, a concept that y'all yeah. ad- adapted to and believe in... You know, right. live life as, you know, right. this is this is our, you know, this is yeah. how we believe. This is our creed per se. Well, it, yeah, it's not really so much a creed, but I, I would think that most atheists would probably be in general agreement that the most sound way to go about living your life is to uh, behave with reason and to behave with respect for yourself and other people, and try to do the best by your family and friends and community and career. Uh, you know, just uh, if if there is such a thing as a higher power or a higher authority, or a higher authority out there, uh, we w- we would say that that's reason, and uh, and human dignity, and that those things should be respected. Uh, but uh, you you'll you'll find that uh, the only uh, in terms of how we view religion, I mean, the uh, atheists will really we agree that we don't believe in any gods, but above and beyond that, then atheists can have any follow any sort of philosophy or or or. or uh, or our outlook on life that they see fit, right? I mean, we've got liberal atheists, we've got conservative atheists, we have libertarian atheists, we have atheists who are vegetarians, uh, we have uh, atheists who think that's silly, uh, we have atheists who uh, like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and we have atheists who probably, you know, uh, like friends, although if I ever met one... Although they're I just, heretics. Uh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, they're just about the lowest of the low. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, you know what I mean. It's just, it's all different kinds of... Uh, dis- On an individual yeah. basis, atheists, atheists believe all sorts of things, but yeah. you're asking if there's one particular creed that binds us all together, and the answer is no, we Not just really. don't have a particular belief in yeah. God. Yeah, we just, we, we all would be in general agreement that we don't think that there are any, that there's anything supernatural. However, I think most of the people who are in this atheist group 
tend to be, you know, sort of of a, like you said, rational, scientific type of uh, ethos, uh, yeah. tend toward the secular humanist sort of thing. Well, and, and then what I don't understand about that, I mm -hmm. mean, like I said, uh, it, as humans, and, mm -hmm. you know, we think differently from the, from a dog. You know, I got a dog sitting down here at my feet right now. Mm -hmm. He doesn't understand the things that I do, and therefore I'm smarter than the dog. But yet, is there, is there any, you know, is there a way that, there, that maybe there's somebody out there who is, smarter than us, and I'm not saying aliens or anything, but I'm just talking about, you know, a deity, a, a creator, per se, you know, who, you know, as humans, we can't fathom or understand. There's no scientific explanation to back it up. There's nothing like that. It's just more, you know, that, I mean, that's what faith is about, period. Sure. There, no there are what all kinds of things into. that are smarter t than me. Uh, Albert Einstein was smarter <laughs> than me, uh, but, you know. Yeah. I, I would say uh, that. Well, right, uh, but he... <laughs> Yeah. We're talking, you know, yeah. I would, more and more advanced. Another human, I'm saying, could there not be someone on sure. the total pole at a higher level who could There could be you know, aliens who are smarter be. than me. Yeah, and, and I would say I that. Uh, assume that there are, but yeah. there could be. As with aliens, um, but, I would have to wait for the evidence to turn up before. I would say that it's possible. And when the evidence uh, looks like it favors the idea, then I'll really start looking at it as a serious I would think, thing. Right, but I'm not speaking of aliens. I suppose that, 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 that the mean? question you're that trying to ask is, that. is it possible that there's someone who's infinitely smart and perfect? And I would say not very likely. Yeah. Yeah, that would just, uh, because then you would have I to. I mean, smarter than me? Sure, no problem. Yeah. Infinitely smart? I'm not sure. What is, that's what does that even possible. mean? I mean, because yeah. if we we not being infinitely smart would ha would have a hard time then, once we've suggested the possibility of such a being, explaining what even infinitely smart means. Right, but you then know? there's no reason to assume that ex it exists until we have some kind of evidence that it sure. does. Sure. So uh, you know, it, there may be a call for it to reveal itself. I mean. That, that's sure, there may be, you know, but kind of, we're going to wait on that. I like y'all, I kind of, uh, you know, there's a lot of ideas that float around that I have. Mm -hmm. But one thing I thought is, you know, uh, in going back to the concept of, you know, er, there's a, a ladder in, on Earth that, you know, everybody, there's a little bit higher intelligence. You know, humans are higher, and seem to be the highest of intelligence. You know, we're able to talk, live, breathe, think for ourselves. Of course, that's what we do best. Uh, but, you know, it just seems like after you look around, you look at the bigger picture and you think, man, there, there's got to be something else out there that, you know, as humans, we don't understand. We don't have the capability to understand, and that that's just something I... I would, I would say that we don't we don't understand it. I might I might uh, disagree that we don't have the capability to understand it. I mean, after all, until we encounter the thing, we don't know, right? I mean, well, we have to just keep evolving. Is that well, how you would come to understand? It? Well, I mean, it's like a, you know, a uh, hundred years ago, right? Nobody under, you know had had even an inkling of an idea of of things that we think about with regularity today, like quantum mechanics and sure. sure. Uh, so so it's. To say to say that we'll never be able to figure certain things out, I think, is, you know, it sells the human race short. I mean, because all the things that we take for granted now that a hundred years ago would have been pure pie in the sky science fiction, uh, you know, so who's to say what you know people in in the year twenty one hundred will be walking around taking for granted that today we're saying, oh, we're just not capable of of figuring that out. You can't know. That's the exciting thing about life, right? And about science and about exploration is that there's always new things to learn. You know, and there's always new things that you're going to learn that might cause you to completely rethink things that you that the human race has been thinking for centuries. You know, so, uh, you know, we could. Uh, and this is happening in astronomy all the time. You know, it seems like now every you know every few months the Hubble spots something, mm -hmm. you know, a jillion light years away, and astronomers have to completely re go back to the drawing board and say, okay, well now maybe the universe doesn't work that way all the time. Maybe well, there's not others. completely. But. Well, well, you know what I mean. I mean, there's certainly there, there have been situations where physicists have said, okay, we're going to have to now rethink that. So right. th that's just all part of the process. Yeah. You know, so. And what I've learned about evolution, too, is mm -hmm. there seems to be a lot of loopholes in evolution. And they, like you're saying, rethinking, they, they seem to have to rethink a lot of things that they previously believed because new facts or information has come out or, you know, theory, just there's some, you know, there's some, some loopholes, it seems, in the theory itself, and in the you know, I Such do believe things have evolved, but you know, I believe that they evolved from a creator. I think there was things that are allowed to evolve, you know, throughout time, space, and so forth. That's but to say, like, I don't know how y'all feel about the Big Bang theory, but that has nothing to do with evolution. 
well, but it, that's how life comes around, right? A big bang theory. Yeah, life well, that's how the universe comes around. The ev I mean, evolution is meant to explain how once life exists, how it can uh, evolve, evo but, develop into all these different complicated yeah, life forms but, that we see but today. But doesn't that come from a big? Could that not come from a big bang theory? Well, well no, I mean, the universe, it could, but it, then life evolved. Right, from well, it, it could, but it's unrelated. I mean, you know, it could be that uh, God you know, bang the universe into existence, right? And and like created the first tiny little life form, but then everything that we know about evolution after that point is still valid, which is what evolution is about. Yeah. So where, so would, we, we where still... would evolution, where would the uh, evolvement come from in, you know, where's the originality involved? If it doesn't come from a big bang, what... As an evolutionist, where do you believe that I, life started from? I well, we know that organic. I'm confused about the concept of evolution because yeah. evolution doesn't have anything to do with the beginning of the universe or the beginning of life. Evolution is what happens after life, or you know, after the simplest form of life already exists. Yeah. So That's then why when do the they theory teach of that in school as you know, in, they don't. You must have misunderstood I, your I teacher. Have my professors tell me this is how. Life has began right here. Mm -hmm. This, this is well, that's, no, that's they probably back, said yeah. this is how life evolved. Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, it's 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 a, yeah. There, it's it's a different, in fact, an entirely different field of study talking about ultimate Didn't origins. Did we have that uh, talk origins website? Yeah, Steve, go ahead and put that up on the screen. Talk origins. Um, you're getting down into cosmology and the ultimate origins of things actually is not. Uh, there's a website where some of those these questions you have might actually be answered at the bottom of your page. Um, but yeah, I mean, we know that organic molecules that are the, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the, the molecular building blocks of life, these are very, very common in the universe. They're very common around hot young stars. They're all over the place. Mm -hmm. Organic molecules are a dime a dozen. So, um, and in terms of, you what, know, figuring hot out... Hot young stars? You mean like Britney Spears or something? But, um, <laughs> right. Sorry. Uh, yeah, lots of organic molecules there. Um, so uh, read up on some of this stuff because the answers are out there. We're not scientists, right? We're not biologists. We're not astronomers. We're not cosmologists. So we, we don't, we're not the people with the ultimate expertise to give you the answers for these things. But if, if there's anything on any scientific theory that confuses you as to how it works, the information's out there. So um, check that out, okay? We're going to go ahead and go on to our next guy, and we appreciate your questions. And call us back any time, okay? Have a good New Year. Okay, who's next? It's too late for that. Well, it's still newish, right? Okay, four days. Come on, you know you can still be happy. We got a little time. All right. Uh, yes, I heard that, but I don't care. Uh, <laughs> Joseph is on three. Hi, Joseph. You're on the air. How's it yes, going? Hello. Hi. Hi. Thanks for holding on. Good show. Thank you. Um, I just had a, a, a kind of a quick point. Um, you've addressed the idea that uh, the, one of the other callers talking about the earthquake in Iran. Sure. And there's this feeling among a lot of religious people <laughs> that there's nothing transcendent in atheism to that they can respond to. But I just wanted to point out that there are actual texts that people use even among atheists, like, for example, A Free Man's Worship, Bertrand Russell, uh, you know, The Tie of Common Doom, or uh, The Plague. You know, the, the idea of existentialism. Yeah, but, but that's not like atheist gospel. It's just one particular guy's opinion. Right, right. But it, I just find that, that that many people have a spiritual instinct mm -hmm. and that, you know, atheism is not feeding that. But there are texts out there that might fulfill that function. Yeah. Um, people, people do wonder, uh, you know, they often ask atheists that, you know, lacking these kinds of religious or transcendental spiritual beliefs... You know, how do atheists deal with, you know, tragic events in their lives? Mm -hmm. And I would have to say we deal with them much in the same way that more or less everyone else does. We just don't take uh, this utter refuge in, in sort of a form of spirituality or superstition uh, that causes us to, you know, end up more kind of making excuses about things. Or, uh, you know, we, we try and maybe don't always succeed, but we try to kind of face them head on. You know, um, yeah. and it's difficult, you know, I mean, painful experiences, you, you know, it's human to feel pain and it's uh, when, when these happen and there's nothing wrong with that. So there's no reason to stifle or, or, um, or, or, or try to, you know, to, to, to contain or restrict that. Um, but, uh, you know, you, you do the best you can, right? Everyone that I think part of being, uh, a, a rationalist is understanding that life, you know, comes with 
you know, the good and the bad, that there is tragedy to, you know, and heartache. And there are uh, situations that, um, you know, will, you know, you'll have bad days. Everyone gets down in the dumps. Everyone ultimately will have to deal with losing a family member or, 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 or just any, even something light, like a beloved pet or getting fired from a job or, 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 or having an accident that might hurt you, what have you. And, uh, you have to, and, and you have to have an understanding that that is part of life. And when it happens, you know, the best way to deal with it is, is to, uh, you know, rally around your friends, your family, whoever else, you know, uh, you know, take your solace where you may. And, and, uh, th- there are ways, there are in fact ways to, to get through these things without resort to supernatural beliefs because it ultimately it's, it is part of the human experience. And if, if, and if you understand that, I think that's a key to, uh, being able to get through it in the first place. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. So, uh, Russell, did you have a... Nope. Input? Uh, okay. Well, we'll have to we have hit, 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 hit you with some tragedy. So, we'll have to, <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, anything, anything else? Any other observations? Uh, no, that, that was really it. You, you all addressed my other point, which is that trying to argue that 60 people should die so that somebody else can have a enrichment experience is morally inane. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's... For yeah. real. <laughs> it is. I mean, it's... it's, it's uh, it's it's a classic example of cog- the cognitive dissonance we talk about, right? And and you see it all the time, right? I mean, a a uh, a plane will crash, killing everyone on board, but it will narrowly miss uh, hitting a school. It's a miracle, right? You mm-hmm. know, it's it's you know it's uh, probably the ultimate uh, you know way of people you know sometimes will it's, it's the half the glass is half full philosophy of life but uh, yeah. but ultimately it is it is kind of it's it's especially morally inane if you are someone who believes in in uh, this this god who is a moral authority and, and guardian angels are supposed to be looking out for you um well you know sort of runs in direct conflict with that right, <laughs> right. so thank you for okay, your thanks. okay take care all right as far as uh, personal tragedy and losing family members go i mean uh, you know i'm a, probably about to lose my last grandparent uh, and that's a shame. um you know, yeah, lost ha- my... that happens to everybody. Yeah, my but, grandmother died um, in 88. You know, yeah. when I have lost past grandparents, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, my basic attitude was uh, was to remember or write something on uh, on what they meant to me and how they changed my life. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it helps me recognize that, you know, regardless of whether there's a God or not, their life did have value to somebody, and that's me. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember when my, when my grandmother died... Mm-hmm. Um, and this is, you know, 15 years ago now, but, uh, uh, so she was 75 and ailing. And although she and I were, you know, great buds and very close, right? When it actually happened, you know, I didn't break down and, you know, have a, have a big, right. you know, breakdown. I mean, I just, I said, okay, okay. She was 75. She was ailing. Mm-hmm. And I sort of dealt with it by, I remember I went home because I was in college at the time and I just hung out in her room the night before the funeral and I read some of her letters and personal papers and I looked through some scrapbooks hmm. You know, and uh, read some of her writings. She she wrote poetry and stuff like that. And I just kind of hung out there and sort of absorbed some of that, you know, essence. You yeah. know, not in the supernatural sense, right. but of just the, you know, I just sort of indulged in memories of all the good, positive sure. memories of her that night. And it was fine. And it was like, okay, you know, and, and I just could go on and say, wow, you know, now I'll always remember this person. Yep. And so it was, uh, it was a, a way of dealing with it that was uh, just sem- seemed natural to me. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it seems if, if breaking down just doesn't, you know. right? Oh well, but people do. I mean, people are people are people, and I love it. Hi, Mason. Thanks for holding. Dude, you know, if you actually have the guts to do it, why not go out and give it a try? All right. Yeah. <laughs> Don't what? talk about it. Go out and unite do it. or bash. Yeah. Go do it, Which, dude. If you think that you're that badass, go and do it. You know, impress us. Give it a shot. They it's... would kick his ass. <laughs> Shh, don't tell him that. Okay. Yeah. Well, he know actually he knows they would, which is why he just talks about it and doesn't doesn't have right. the balls to do it. Uh, hey, you're on the air, Todd. Hello? Hi, Todd. Yeah, how you doing? Uh, y'all are being way too nice to these guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fault. Um, I'm uh, sorry. I I would just I would have cut most of these people off uh, a lot <laughs> earlier, but. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to, y'all brought up, uh, y'all were talking about Christmas Mm -hmm. and, you know, the history of Christmas, a lot of Christians don't seem to even have any clue to. And and one of the points I like to bring up to Christians that kind of stops them in their tracks is like, you just give them a quiz and just say, you know, okay, who was born on December 25th? 
mm-hmm. and who is always depicted with a glowing halo, and, you know, so on and so forth. And they'll always say Jesus. And you go, no, actually, we're talking about someone who was like a thousand years or so before, Helios, mm-hmm. the sun god. Mm-hmm. And they just, you know, they freeze up and they just look at you, you know. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, yeah. when you really look at the history of all religions and you, you look at the, you know, the 12 uh, apostles of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus from the dead and compare them to stories from the past, you know, it's, it's the same story being repeated at least two or three times, if not over and over, like Noah's Ark is... You know, the the, whole, the entire planet has, you know, uh-huh. flood myths, you know, that are real similar. Well, and I think right. I think that the uh, J- the Judean flood myth came directly from the Babylonian... Uh, exactly. U- that Utnapish- was added later into yeah. the Bible. Utnapishtim. You know, and the, when you think yeah. about that, you're like, okay, the, you know, they added this later. They said, we're going to take this ancient Babylonian right. myth and just kind of stick it well, in here. Well, of, because of course, uh, theists take that as evidence that the flood really happened. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, there's so, <laughs> But, you know... There doesn't seem to be any mention in, like, Egyptian history where uh-huh. they say, you know, and we built all these pyramids and, and oh, we all died, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. you know, because apparently, you know, if if the flood had actually happened, by the time the pyramids were built, there would be, like, 12 people building it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why it took so long. <laughs> you know, and, and there's plenty of evidence that there were, you know, floods because the Ice Age was ending and stuff, you know, and so there was obviously going to be coastal floods. And we had but, a Black Sea inundation about, you know, uh, yeah, 7,500 years ago or something. Right, which, and then there was Atlantis, which we know is real. <laughs> Uh, wasn't that uh, the island of Thera? Wasn't that it? I don't know. Massive volcanic island in the uh, Egyptian blew up. Yeah, it could have that's been supposedly, any number of places. That supposedly inspired Plato to invent yeah. Atlantis yeah. in the Republic. So yeah, you're right. I mean, many we talk many many believers who call, and who call us on this show don't understand the actual history and the development of of their belief system. You know, um, and the they just get what reason, their, they just get what their ministers tell them. Yeah, and the reason behind you know why why these leaders would be putting these ideas forward it was it was mm-hmm. all for control. Mm-hmm. It wasn't really because oh you know I have this divine you know they they certainly had at least some degree of uh, mm-hmm. sitting there going well I'm divinely influenced and God's uh-huh. on my side because they definitely were egomaniacs. Uh-huh. But you know they weren't they didn't really believe that you know this one God was up there controlling, whether it was Christian God or, you know, whatever. Well, some of them may have, you know, I mean, some of the, some of the yeah. priesthood had, you know, they were, uh, but uh, you, you, ultimately you're right. I mean, back the, the priesthood uh, were the leaders in, in, in many of these most ancient civilizations. They were the, the they controlled that civilization. And, uh, and it was about, uh, you know, shoring up their power. Yeah, money and so, power. I mean, sure. yeah. same, it's, you know, same as it's always been. Same old story, right? And, and one other thing I wanted to ask you all is... Uh, right you know, bringing us to modern times, mm-hmm. is the various Republican, uh, mainly politicians who, you know, in more private, you know, like uh, at graduation ceremonies at colleges and whatnot, make comments about, um, you know, the, their support of, Judy, of Israel uh, regaining complete control of the Holy, Holy Land so mm-hmm. Christ can come again. Mm-hmm. And, you know, how the people that are in charge of our, you know, foreign policy and stuff have this global, like, you know, apocalyptic view that we have to, you know, help mm-hmm. Israel regain the Holy Land. <laughs> I know. This, it, this I mean, is how, kind of... how crazy is that? I mean, people who look at, tor- people who view the end of the world as a party they can't wait to get to, yeah. are very creepy people. <laughs> yes. that, that just I don't get that. I love Jews. Yeah. I mean, I love Jews with, with all my heart, but I don't get anybody who thinks that, you know, we have to, to push this agenda so that the world can come to an end. That yeah, just this, this is Pat Robertson. Yeah. You know, this is kind of a tricky issue for me as a Jew, and I think Al Franken said something along the same lines, because, you know, as, as a cultural Jew, I want e- Israel to do well, but yeah. I'm not too happy about people who support it because they think it's got a crucial role in, in, in bringing destroying about the, the world. Again, yeah, God yeah. bless us. God. Oh, man. Well, hey, we appreciate your call. We're now flat, uh, flat out of time. But, well, great. Uh, I'm glad I got my call in. Yeah, yeah. You can bring some good points to tell you. Just for you, we'll go and we'll beat up some, on some callers next week, all right? Well, cool, great. Well, hey, tell Arlo, if y'all ever see him again, that uh, yeah. Todd from Ribcage is Todd called in. And I will uh, I'll I'll do try it, to man. get in touch with him if I can. Yeah, I actually and spoke to him a few days ago. Remember so that there are weekly meetings at the Hot Jumbo Bagel Shop every right. Sunday. What? 
I'm sorry, yes. didn't mean to cut oh. you off there, but we're we're out of time. Yeah, uh, uh, for unbelievers, uh, the bagel shop meetings are uh, there uh, for uh, you know unbelievers to meet and greet and a little little mixers, and. Um, also, Sunday at 10.30. Sunday at 10.30. And also, uh, if you didn't get your call in, if you have other questions for us, other ways in which, uh, you know, other points to bring up that, where you think we're right or wrong or what have you, tv at atheist-community.org is your viewer feedback email address. And we get we take the best letters we get, we read them on the air, uh, we, we answer all of them that we get, but the best ones we'll bring and we'll read on the air, and it's all kinds of fun. And again, didn't get to actually talk about origins of the Christmas celebration, but so what. All right, thanks very much. Uh, thank you, Russell. Thank Excellent you. Excellent job. Uh, we'll see you again this time. Next week, reruns are on Tuesdays. These